Mega Praise Ministries. We're out to reach the lost, to bring the lost sheep back home, to build a relationship between God and man, for the worship, the presence, the healing, the restoring. That's what it's about, the restoring of the homes, the restoring of the families, the healing of the bodies, to enjoy a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We love the worship. We love the outpouring of the presence of God. This is what this ministry is all about, Mega Praise Ministries, to see what that was that was lost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Pastor Manuel Johnson, and this is only the truth, and we have a wonderful wonderful full program for you today we are going to be dealing with history and what's going to be taking place in the future in the body of christ and i just want to first of all let you know everything that i say to you every week the good news is you don't have to be part of the bad news and i have two wonderful wonderful i call them generals of the faith and they were with us last week, and I wanted them back again so we could get even more details. And we have Winifred with us here today. Hello, Winifred and Betty. Hello. Welcome to Only the Truth. Now, we were, had so many hits and so many uh, people that was enjoying our program last week. We were talking about Catherine Kuhlman and Amy McPherson. These were generals of the past. Generals that left legacies. Legacies for us. The Lord raised them up in tough times. Raised them up in really tough times. And used them mightily. And with the respect of all the generals in the past, each and every one of them, both male and, and female, I want to, today I want to focus on two, Kathleen Kuhlman and Amy McPherson. Why? Why? It's not too many people left that was around that time in that era. Not too many, you know? But we do have two wonderful women that are still here and God, and they're still finishing the race. And first I want to talk about Catherine Kuhlman Winifred. The days of Catherine Kuhlman, that was, that was doing your prime. The day, yes. You were in your 30s. Wow. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our engineer give a special clip of Catherine Kuhlman. Go ahead, Mr. Engineer. And then we're going to talk to you some more, Winifred, about this wonderful legend, Catherine Kuhlman. Priest at the very throne of God. In the person of Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. And everything that you and I receive today must come through Jesus. Adore him, softly begin to choir hallelujah. That was a popular hymn in the 60s. Do you? And it, it's still popular. It's still popular. Yes. Look at that. During that time. Now, do you know what auditorium that was? Do I know what? Do you know what auditorium that was? Was that in Glinda um, or was that in I, Pittsburgh? I don't know. I don't think it was a shrine. Mm hmm. Well, anyway, that, for some reason, she, she played a lot of different songs. But that was one of her favorite songs. Yes. Now, you were going there. You were attending a lot of her meetings monthly, I hear. Once a month, yes. Well, what would happen? I mean, the people, when they showed up, was it always, was it always packed? Always. Oh, 
But, but busloads came from everywhere. Mm. And by the time the, by the, time the uh, uh, main doors were open, the shrine was half full. And they only let 10 people in at a time. 10 people in at a time? Yes. How come so long? How come? Well, the, there were so many people there already, from the busloads, and, and everyone who was in the choir was allowed to bring two guests. So usually a spouse and a friend. And they sat in a special place. I went there once when I was diagnosed with cancer. And the spirit fell on me so heavily yeah. all through the meeting. I was, we were, my uh, friend and her husband were there. And the, the power of the, of the Lord was on me so heavily, they were locking up all the doors. I couldn't walk out. And I couldn't stand up. And my friend had to, I had uh, her husband on one side and she was on the other and, and the, uh, the, the people who were looking after the uh, shrine came and said, you have to leave, we're locking up. Wow. And, <laughs> and but you said you, were, you said you were diagnosed with cancer. At that time? Yes. Were you healed in her meetings? Um, well, I went to, after that meeting, I went to uh, Kaiser. I had canceled my appointment three times because I was praying for the Lord to heal me. And when I, uh, uh, I got up one Monday morning when I was supposed to go to have this, this uh, operation, and, uh, and so I looked in the mirror and I was a skeleton. And I thought, oh, wow, maybe I should go and have that taken out after all. So I called my neighbor and I said, I'm, I'm going, first I called Kaiser and I said, am I still scheduled? And they said, yes, we didn't have time to replace you. And so I called my neighbor and I told her what was happening. I said, what do I do? What do I take? I've never been to the hospital before. So she said, I will send my husband over in 10 minutes. And this is what you do. You take this, this, and this, and you don't take this, this, and this. So I got ready and he drove me down. And uh, uh, they had, uh, this was in the 60s. And at that time, when they did a biopsy, they were ready to take the whole breast if necessary. And uh, so I remember I was in the recovery room and the doctor came up to me. He was a Jewish doctor and he was not a believer. And he said, uh, uh, it's benign. They do a freeze test in the operation room. And he said, the test was benign. So I said, praise the Lord. And he dropped my hand like a hot potato. <laughs> wow. So and it could have been connected to the meeting. So it was, I believe I was healed at that meeting. Wow. Because the power of the Lord was on me so strong, I couldn't walk out on my own. Mm. I had to have help to get out of the shrine and they were locking up and <laughs> we were the last last three people. They practically kicked us out. Wow. Um, well, so did you go every month? Were you yes. Every month? Every month. And yeah. every month people would storm in. I uh, just try to... Oh, before each service, there was... Uh, they would be outside the doors and there was a... Uh, oh, I guess it might have been for the weather, a, a, a place where... Uh, where people congregated and uh, there were lots of people. The whole area was full of people and they were lined up around the block. And, uh, but the music from the choir practicing was piped outside. Mm. And everyone outside was singing. We were having our own service and, and uh, uh, there was always a song leader there somewhere. So, we, so you think that was Kathleen's idea to have that out there? To, to kind of set the mode? Uh, that could be, that could be. Because that sounds like something she would do. Yes, and, and <laughs> but wow. we had all this music that was, now the practicing began the, at nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. And that's when most of the people came and gathered and the doors didn't open until one o'clock. How long was her services? Five hours. Did it seem like five hours? No, it did not seem like five hours. It seems we had just arrived. <laughs> wow. And the place was, was packed. And as I said, the shrine was, was almost full. It was more than 50% full. What, when, I, what when I, I love about Catherine is I hear that she yielded to the Holy Spirit. 
Yes. She yielded to the direction of how the Lord was leading. Well, she, some people called her a faith healer, but she objected to that, that uh, title. Uh, in her early ministry, one day in a service, someone was healed. Really? Much to her surprise. Her main focus was salvation and relationship with God. And those, those were the two points that she, she uh, uh, emphasized all the time. And she did not preach healing, but it just happened. And she said, the Holy Ghost is here and the Holy Ghost will heal. But people came because they wanted to be healed. Yes, but that was not, she, would, she did not. But she wouldn't preach that. She was not billed as a faith healer and she really objected to that title. And she said, God heals. God's the one heal. doing the healing. I don't heal, God heals. Isn't that wonderful? And this happened early in her ministry. When she, she was saved when she was 14 in a Methodist church. And at 16, she was preaching. Now, at what time she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I don't know. But uh, one day in one of, her, uh, one of her meetings, someone was healed. But she, <laughs> she, when she first left home, she went to this town and her father was the mayor of the town of Concordia, Missouri, where she was living. Really? And her father was the mayor, so, and she had a very close relationship with her father. And so when she went to this town, she went to the mayor. And she asked the mayor where she should, she needed a place to live, a place to stay, and the mayor directed her to this lady. And, but she needed a place a private place to practice her preaching. And at this home, this, this, there was no place. So the lady, the lady had a turkey house in her yard. And Catherine asked if she could live in the turkey house. So a turkey house. A house a, that's where the lady used to raise turkeys. And so the lady said, yes, you can, you can if you want to fix it up and live there, that's fine. So she fixed up the turkey house and she lived there. But she, she preached in a number of places. One place was a pool hall. She <laughs> and, when, and she always preached salvation in those, in those uh, early days? Salvation and relationship. What drew you to Catherine Kuhlman? What drew you to her? Uh, well, my cousin invited me to go. My cousin had cancer. And she had, in her 30s, my cousin was 15 years older than I, and in her 30s, she had a goiter removed. And that's where the cancer started. And she was going down to Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. And in those days, when they were giving you treatment for cancer, they just went by the book. And they didn't really uh, test the patient so much as just followed instructions. And uh, one day she went down, and her eyes, she was a, a legal secretary. And one day, um, well, more than one day, her, she got so she couldn't read back her shorthand notes. Really? So she made an appointment with the doctor. And she, when she went in, all five doctors that had treated her were there. And she said, oh, oh something is wrong. And so they told her that they had given her too much of, of this treatment or whatever, what, whatever it was they were giving her. I think it, I don't know whether it was radiation or not. But uh, anyhow, they said, if you will not sue us, we will give you free medical care for the rest of your life. Well, they only expected her to live six months. And so she, um, in California, when you have bad news, the ladies go to the beauty shop. In Nova Scotia, when you have bad news, you went out and you bought a new hat. <laughs> but anyhow, she went to the beauty shop and uh, the, the beautician, she had to take her glasses off and her eyes were bugging out because she had this thyroid problem. And uh, so the, the beautician said, you need help. And Anna said, yes, I do. 
So the beautician told her about Catherine Kuhlman. Really? And she called, my cousin called me and said, will you go with me? So I went. And that's the first time I heard about Catherine Kuhlman. I didn't know who she was or I had never heard about her before. And because of my Episcopalian background, you know, they have no female, at that time they had no female preachers and women were in the choir or uh, taught Sunday school. And, but uh, no preachers. No preachers. And so when she came out on the platform, it was like she was floating out on the platform. She was a very dramatic lady. And, uh, and so I looked at my cousin and I said, who does she think she is? Will the engineer sh uh, show the photos of Catherine Kuhlman? Keep talking. And so uh, uh, I, I really was not impressed. And, but in about half an hour, all I saw was what God was doing. I didn't see Catherine Kuhlman any longer. I only saw what God was doing. And, that, and then I was really impressed. <laughs> I believe in miracles. I believe in God. Wasn't that a, a special quote, uh, or a quote of hers? Uh, Nothing is impossible. Yes, and she used to, uh, in her television program, she uh, used to often say, I believe in miracles. And I think, and I think she played that song, that hymn, I, I believe, believe in, in miracles. miracles. Yes. And I, or I believe in God. Yes. And yeah. so the miracles happen. The miracles happen. Wow. But when she was at the shrine and when she came out on the platform, they always played How Great Thou Art. That was her, one of her favorites. Wow. What do you miss about Catherine Kuhlman? Well, I miss her teaching. She was a great teacher. Come on. And uh, I, I learned much from Catherine Kuhlman and J. Vernon McGee. I used to have them both for breakfast <laughs> in the morning. What, what was Catherine Kuhlman's popular teachings? Oh, well, she taught salvation mm -hmm. and relationship. Relationship with? God. God. Yeah, a close relationship with God. That's, that was her. I know one of her quotes was, if Jesus can touch, can, can trust the Holy Spirit, why can't you? Yes. If Jesus can touch, can trust the Holy Spirit with his life. Yes. She was drama when she said that. Why can't you? Yes. And she was so connected with the Spirit of God. Oh, she was. She, she was, was so connected with the mood uh, of God, and she wouldn't come on the stage unless the Holy Spirit says, I'm ready. Yes. Wow. That's right. So everybody, it seemed like everybody was touched. Uh, well, she, after the service, she was very, um, sometimes she was quite despondent because she was afraid that she had not, that, um, that everyone who came, the service was not long enough to touch everyone who really should have been healed. But one, <laughs> one time, uh, a Jewish lady was healed, and she came with her neighbor. Yes. And uh, so she, Catherine never laid hands. She didn't have any healing <clears throat> lines. She didn't lay hands on people. And she didn't want anyone to go forward unless they had received a healing. So this lady received a healing. And she came with her neighbor. And so she and her neighbor, Maggie, was, was uh, her assistant. And Maggie would go through the aisles looking for people who had, who had been healed. And Maggie took this, this uh, couple, these two ladies up. And the Jewish lady said, I don't know why I'm here. She said, I don't know why God healed me. She said, I don't even believe in Jesus. <laughs> and, and she said, I only came because my neighbor wanted me to, she didn't want, my neighbor didn't want to come alone. But, but uh, God healed but her. God healed her. Well, you see, that's the grace of God. Yes, God looks you know, on the heart. Most people say, well, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do that, and it'll go for God to heal me. But his grace, his grace, and even in that time, God's grace was flowing, his grace and his mercy. And uh, Betty, I want to ask you, have, did you, have you ever been to any of Captain Kuhlman's meetings? Just once. Just Actually, once? Actually, 
actually by that time we were out in evangelistic work and not in really? the area. Really? Was it in Pittsburgh? Was it in California? In California. Was it in Glendale? No, it was at the shrine. The shrine? Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, absolutely. It was your first time, huh? My first time. Do you, do you remember the year that was? No, I really don't. Probably in the 60s. In the 60s? Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and, and how did she impact your life? Well, you know, I felt that uh, at such a time as this, God raises people to be used to win people to Jesus and to see people healed and, and lives changed. And, um, and that's what I felt about her, mm. that it was, she was in God's timing and was used. In fact, I had a friend who traveled with her that I had grown up singing with, and uh, I don't know what all he did, but he would tell me about the wonderful meetings, too, mm. when they were in other parts of the country, uh, you know, in between the times at the shrine. Wow. So it was, it was a blessing, and I knew that, you know, God was using her in a wonderful way. In a very wonderful way. Absolutely. I, I, I love that. You know, we are tribute to the generals of the past. And I believe that Catherine and Amy, oh, they are viewing us as a cloud of witness. <laughs> and we, we, we thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to have meetings like that again? Yes, I think so. I pray that we will. I believe we will. Greater. Yes. A greater move of God. Yes. And not just one, but many people will be raised up. Right. Yes. I, I, I believe that. And, I, you know, I, according to Joel, and, and it was also uh, re-quoted in the book of Acts of Peter, that the Holy Spirit is going to pour. That's and right, he's yes. pouring now. But I really believe that the days are coming, and they're close. We're going to see such a, this enormous move of the power of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the healing of God, the salvation of God. But we are going to see such a time. I mean, it's happening right now. It is happening right now. We're not living in dead times. But I just believe there's going to be an explosion like never before. Yes. This God is not done with this generation. No. He's not done. I don't care what you hear on the news or what you hear in, 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 on YouTube or, or any other uh, devices. It's what we're hearing from heaven. It's what's happening. It's what God is doing in heaven for the earth who, who he loves. I would say he so loved, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, and he's not finished. You see, Jesus spoke something. He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Right. It's not prevail. So sometimes we look at the news and it looks like that the, the, the enemy is, is, is prevailing. I've even heard preachers say the devil is winning. The Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail. So obviously they're paying more attention to the things in this world, the media, than they are hearing from the Lord. They haven't read the book. You know? <laughs> and some of them have read, but they don't believe because they're seeing with their eyes and they're thinking this is it. And you don't let your eyes fool you. God has things happening that you don't even know about. Sometimes ministers can get caught up in fear because of what they're seeing in the natural. And they're thinking that God is losing. But saints, that's not this Bible. That's not the scriptures. My, my Bible tells me in 1 Kings that when Elijah had an issue, Lord, I'm the only prophet. Remember that? Yes. Oh, Lord, they're massacring all the prophets, and I'm the only one left. God didn't. He just was talking to him. And then he said, oh, by the way, I have 7,000 reserved. You don't even know about them. You see, there's always that remnant. And we have to, Elijah got so caught up in what Jezebel was doing that he forgot about what God was doing. And we have, there, there are ministers like that, and I'm sorry to say, 
God is doing so much more than you, what you can even imagine. If you seek him, you will hear about it. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Amy McPherson. She was used in God's time at a very young age. She grew up on a farm in Ontario, Canada, and um, started preaching very early in her life, was married. Her husband, first husband was a missionary. He died after they had been married two years, and God called her, and it wasn't a time for women to be preaching. Now, I want to stop right there. I love what you just said. It wasn't a time. And most of us, we say, it's not a time. You know, are the circumstances. You know, God does his, I notice that God moves the greatest in the worstest time. Yeah. You know, when did Jesus come? At the worst time, yeah. you know, at, according to man. But he came at the right time. Yeah, right. You know, I, we have a clip. Can we, we're going to run the clip of All Amy right. McPherson. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Engineer. Amy threw off the comforts of home, packed up her two children, and set off to evangelize America at a time when women could not even vote, and a woman preacher was unheard of, and in some quarters, even unthinkable. But every day and every night, Jesus spoke to my soul, now will you go, preach, preach, preach the word of God. Despite the obstacles, Amy would not give up. She had answered the last call of all, and it would soon take her to the booming city of Los Angeles. She arrived with nothing but a gospel car, as she called it, $100 and a tambourine. It was 1918. There were only one half million people in LA when Amy got here, but within the next 10 years, the city would triple in size. Sister Amy, as she was often called, grew in popularity. Look at that. Wow. Now, there's a lot more, but you know, you just download it on YouTube, you can get the full hour of it. I just wanted to get a small little clip of that, how Amy moved forward in a time where it was hard. Yes, right. Even to be an evangelist, uh -huh. let alone build a, a temple, a church, went in her 30s. She was in her early 30s and finished Angela's Temple absolutely by faith in 1923. It was finished. And it, uh, yes in 23 wow. and then started the Bible College and sent out missionaries and pastors all over the world. Really? And even now there are pastors and missionaries all over the world. Amy has left a legacy. Yes. Four Square Church. Yes. And this is all over the world. Right. Do they still contribute her to the founder? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. She was the founder and um, and it was um, Jesus, the Savior, the Healer, the Baptizer, and the Coming King. That was all, you know, in the logo. Really? Yes. And um, how, to see how God used her um, at that age and to build a temple and to be a pastor of a, of a church was unheard of. Mm. And uh, it seated 5,300 people, and this was like the first mega church now we hear mega churches all the time yes that's true this was the first mega church to have to have an audience that and, and, and a woman and god used a woman to a raise woman look <laughs> at that you know Catherine kuhlman was was best known as for miracles even mm -hmm. though she claimed it wasn't from her it was the lord right what was amy mcpherson's you know they what was she known as well, uh, she would sometimes even speak um, 22 times in a week when she was first starting there preaching. So known as healing. a busy schedule, huh? <laughs> yeah, a busy schedule. Uh, to see um, people saved, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people were saved. People were healed in the divine healing services. I saw many ambulances line up and bring people down in the gurneys Really? To the front, to the front, to be prayed for and healed. And some got out of the bed. They had robes for them. <laughs> they got out of bed and were healed. And I'm, miracle after miracle. Oh my God! We so, would see. So we were living with two wonderful generals that had, uh, you know, that anointing. God was using them to heal, save, and deliver. Yeah. Salvation. You know. 
I, I feel kind of, you know, wet behind the ears when it comes to Amy McPherson because I just found out about her maybe eight years ago. Uh huh. You know, for, you know, but um, it's nice to see someone that you grew up though. Absolutely. You grew up. My family moved from San Francisco to Los Angeles in 1925. And you were part of her I ministry. Was, I was six months old there, and then I grew up there uh, in, in every phase of children's work, uh, being her mascot. How old was you? I was three years old, three, four, and five. You remember being three years old on the, in that ministry? Yes, I do. Wow. And uh, uh, I had a little uniform like hers. And um, I would be able to, once in a while, sit by her up on the platform, but it was for a short time. Or uh, myself and a young man with, had a little uh, Scotch uniform. Right. Uh, we would lead some of the little parades around uh, for children in the front. And then I grew up being in some of the uh, illustrated sermons. She was known for salvation healing and the, and the amazing um, Christian operas she wrote and they presented with all, with all the um, drama and costumes really? and everything else. Yes. I, I heard that she attracted a lot of movie stars. She attracted people uh, from all Back over the Back in those world. days. Yes, in those days. And um, she had illustrated sermons like nobody else had ever had. Okay. They had a whole crew that would build the illustrations for each Sunday night, and those are the illustrated sermons. Can we show some photo clips, Mr. Engineer, of Amy McPherson? That's my mother on the screen right that now. That one? That's my oh, mother. Oh, that's your mother. Hallelujah. She, she and sister were the and this same one here? age. Uh, that no, that's sister on the left. And this picture? That's me <laughs> on the on the left with her. So you, so you and your mother was part of the ministry. Oh yes, my mother. Uh, and in over this, in this picture. Well, I was in the baby orchestra. Is that you? That's me. <laughs> and that is the, is that the uniform they gave you? Yes. That you spoke of. Uh huh. Look at that. <laughs> oh, boy, you look like you're just a little Amy McPherson there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I remember singing, and this is so interesting because it could never happen now, but. We went to the, that's when I was um, on a youth magazine uh, because I sang all, all through my life there and my mother taught divine healing and um, also was um, actually um, previous to that, mm -hmm. she would, ran the commissary and people would come in and just had nothing and what a thrill it was to see those people go out many of them having accepted Jesus as their savior. Mm. It wasn't just food and clothing and furnishing. It was the ministry first, mm. and then what could we do to help the people? You, 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 you know, I'm gonna tell you something. Listening to you two is wonderful. We can listen for even a few more hours. I would, I would love just to hear these, these stories of what happened. And you know, like we all know, uh, giants, uh, generals of old, we all have our success and we all have our, our mistakes, you know, and, but those mistakes are under the blood. Because <clears throat> I know a lot of us who want to talk about, well, they did this, you know, we've all have come short of the glory of God. We all stumble from time to time, but we learn from that. And, and we thank God that these women in tough times move forward and answered the call. Look at the lives. And so many times, I'm not going to focus on people's mistakes, but I'm going to look at what God brought out of, of, of a healing vessel. Because David, King David made mistakes. And he is still called a man after God's own heart. Right, right. You know, so we, the Lord tells us we got to be careful when we look with a negative eye. I want to look through God's eyes. And the salvation, the people that, are, that came into the kingdom, because these women of God made a decision to yield to the calling of God. And many people are born again. And even to this day, Catherine Kuhlman being in heaven, Amy McPherson being in heaven, is still impacting lives around the world. Still impacting lives around the world. And, and, and Winifred and Betty, they were impacted. 
And you know, Winifred, I want to ask you a question. Did you ever, I'm not sure if the time frame was right, did you ever get any, see any of, or was a part of any of Amy McPherson's uh, meetings? No. Did you hear about her? Oh, yes. Yes, and I heard about Angelus Temple, and a friend of mine was married there. Really? And, but I never got to go to Angelus Temple. Wow. And I don't know why. <laughs> the things that you know about her now, if you knew then. Oh, I wish I had gone. Huh? I I'm wish. sure. That would have been good. I wish. But you know what? It's you, you, you two have, have captured history. History and details of a lot of things that you two are, the biology, uh, I'm sorry, biology, for their will, will not tell you. Because the actual, to be there, it's different than yes. to read about it. Yes. Right. It's a totally different experience. To be there, to see the things that the Lord was doing in those days and how he was moving in a time where, where we just needed it. And God has raised up many generals today. To this day, God has raised up generals. And God is using them mightily. And I thank God for the generals that we have now in this time, both men and women. And I thank God for the upcoming generals because there are upcoming generals. Because of, we are not, I, I got great news for you. Jesus is not going away. <laughs> he is not going away. This is his earth. And we are his creation. But if you want to be his children, you call on his name. We're going to talk about coming to the Lord Jesus a little later on. I want to ask a few more questions here. Uh, well, actually more than a few more questions. I want to talk a little bit about Catherine again, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Amy. So tell me this. All of a sudden, she's at the height, height of her uh, calling. And I believe she passed away at 1970... 79, I think 79? And Earl Roberts no. was there. Um, I was either 75 or 73, but it was, we know it was in the 70s. Yes. And Earl Roberts was there with her in the hospital. Oh. Right. And what Earl Roberts says is that he felt the healing power on his hand to heal Catherine. This is the interview from Earl Roberts. He said, I felt the, my hand wanting to heal her. And I placed my hand on her where that infirmity was. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, well, wait a minute. <clears throat> Catherine was being used to heal. But she made a statement that those that, you know, have miracles and, and, and do their meetings, we're not, they're not exempt. Sometimes we, be, we, we, we think that just because you're raised up that you're exempt. Catherine was normal like everyone else. You know, sickness came to her like it came to everyone else. Sickness came to Elijah. You know? Right. People, you, we're not God. We're vessels of God. You know? And he's using us. And so he takes his hand, lays it on, you know, wants to pray for her. And she's in pain. He takes, she takes Earl Roberts' hand, removes it. <laughs> and says, and shakes her head while she's lying with the tubes on her. Yeah. And then Earl Roberts is perplexed. He goes, I want to go home. I want to be with the Lord. My time is up. <laughs> she was tired. Yeah, she was ready to go. She was tired. And that's why a lot of times we, we have loved ones. And they will come to me as a pastor. Pastor, please pray, pray, pray. My person, my, you know, my loved one is sick. My dad is sick. My mother is sick. And, I, and I, I always have to say, Lord, what does a person on the bed of affliction want? What do they want? And many times they want to get out of that body. Yes. And there's a struggle between staying on earth and, and, and leaving. And they want to get out of that body because they're tired of the body. 
And I know the Lord said he, he honors the person on the bed of affliction. And he honored Catherine Kuhlman. Well, let me tell you what happened after that. So, the doctor goes into the room. Because all of a sudden, she started having some conversions or something. And he came out and he says, she's gone. And Earl Roberts says, well, I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> I could have told you that. I already knew it. And um, so I'm not so sure about Amy McPherson, about how she passed away. Could you give us a little insight of that? Well, the night, the last night she preached. Okay. My trio sang. We were teenage girls. We sang for the service uh, in Angeles Temple. And she said, oh, I wish I could take you with me. She was doing an Oakland citywide meeting. Really? Yes, and we said, oh, we'd love to go, but, you know, we're in college, so we just can't go. Um, and then she went to be with the Lord within a couple of days at, at 53 years old, so young. What Was this a sudden? Uh, they said, uh, you know, um, they have made out that she took too much medication, but that wasn't it. She was but bleeding you knew internally. Her. Oh, knew her. And my mother knew her, and they would talk on the phone. Well, and I want you to tell the cameras what really happened. Well, uh, they believed that she was bleeding internally, that she hadn't been feeling good for several days before she went up there. But you saw her. Yes, I saw her the two or three days before. And how did she look? She looked wonderful. Really? But uh, we didn't know if she was in pain or having inter internal bleeding or whatever it was. And, of course, the news said that she had overdosed. But uh, we don't believe that. We believe God took her in, in his timing for her, mm. which um, it was amazing because um, nobody expected it. Nobody expected it. Wow. We didn't know that she was not feeling well. Or, and she was a trooper. She would have she gone on um, in ministry regardless of how she felt, because she mm. knew the Holy Spirit was there to use her and to see people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit wow. and healed. That's, and that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Winifred, was it a surprise to you when Catherine passed? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. Talk to us. Um, I, uh, I knew that she was ill, that she had a heart problem. And, uh, but I knew that she was, people had been saying for a long time that she was wearing herself out. She was just still traveling and she had a heavy schedule and she did not, she was afraid that she would miss a soul. She was always concerned about souls and she was afraid that someone might, might not be converted and, and not make it into heaven. So that was her great concern, and that's what drove her. And that's that's the impetus to her, to her heavy schedule. And so she really, she, she wore herself out. She wore herself out. So she fought a good fight. She, she ran did. a good race. She fought a good fight. And it was a fight. Um, at that time, when she started her ministry. Come on, tell us. Um, she, she started at 16, and uh, she, uh, she was living in the turkey house, and, and she was uh, preaching in, in uh, pool halls and wherever she could get a place. And, and of course, the people in, the, in those days, the collection was a nickel and a dime and a quarter, if, you, if, they, if that was generous. And, <laughs> that was generous. <laughs> and wow. so she, uh, she didn't have much money. So she went, she went to the five and ten, and she got this, bought this. Uh, she had red hair, and she had to be careful of what color she wore. So she bought this bolt of yellow fabric, and she bought the whole bolt because that was the only color that would go with her hair. And so she made several dresses. But in one of the one of the meetings, <laughs> there was a a man who was uh, quite uh, inebriated, and he said, don't you have anything else besides that yellow dress hanging in your closet? <laughs> wow. Well let, so, let me, well, let me tell you something. 
We have many, many nations that are viewing us, even in Facebook and in other areas of the world, YouTube. I want you two to leave a statement of legacy to those so people can take this time, this video, uh, and they can hear this. This generation is going to hear this, and, and, and Jesus, Terry, the next generation, and so on. Winifred, I want you to take a minute and talk to the people. Talk to the youth. Talk to the, the middle class. Talk to them. Tell them what they need to expect in this generation. I want you to leave something to this generation right now. Go ahead, Winifred. Well, Catherine's uh, often said, she talked about love, God's love, and, and the relationship with her Heavenly Father and the relationship that we have with one another. And she always said, love is something you do. And your talk is cheap. You can say whatever you like. You can apologize for this and that. But love is something you do. And this was as especially directed toward husband and wife. But it meant also to every member of the family. And today we have so much um, dissension. We have so much separation. And uh, what if you happen to say something uh, uh, that is not complimentary, uh, you're a racist or you're this or you're that, but love is something you do. And you can do uh, something for someone and they may not think it's the best thing at the moment, but still, uh, if God is in it, it will turn out well. It will be a blessing in the end. So we need to remember to love one another and she, as I said, she stressed her, uh, her uh, relationship with God and each one of us. She had a good relationship with her father, so her relationship with her heavenly father came easy. Amen. 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 Betty, I want you to look at that camera and tell this generation and the next. Well, I believe that God is going to raise up maybe some of you that are listening and looking right now. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're a person of notoriety or everybody knows to begin with, but God is going to lay his hand on you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And sister would always say, preach the word, preach the word. And that's how we live the word. And that's, that's how we're preaching the word. It's not necessarily being up in a pulpit but you can evangelize, you can love and show Jesus' love through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, you may be one of those that God chooses, like he chose Esther, like he chose uh, Amy McPherson, like he chose Catherine. You may be one of those. So look to him and let him use you. Let the Holy Spirit direct you mm. in every step that you take and be sure that you ask Jesus to let you live in his presence because that's the thing that will turn your mind towards him away from other things that are not as important but that Jesus will use you first in your own home, then in your own community, and then who knows where as God will use you. He's used others. He's sent them to Africa. He sent um, women and men out all over the world because that's what his goal for them was. That's what his ministry for them was. So let him use you wherever you are and ask him to give you the gifts that he wants you to be using for his honor and glory. That's the most important thing. Wow. Let love and the power of the Holy Spirit guide you and be what let you be what God wants you to be in his service. Amen. Amen. I want to thank uh, Winifred and, and Betty for coming and being a part of this wonderful network and spreading the good news of Christ. Thank you too. And you, many of you, you have sent in your prayer requests and we have them here. And I'm not sure if the camera can, can get on these prayer requests. I want to pray. Uh, I, I, I pray that God will visit you. 
most of all, that you will come to know the Lord. We're all here. Catherine and Amy, they're gone on to be with the Lord. But we're here. But we know where we're going. Do you know where you're going? Do you know where you will spend eternity? Yes, death has a price. And it either is going to be for you or against you. I know when I take my last breath where I'm going. I know because I gave my life to the Lord. How do you do that, you ask? Right now, pray with us. I'm going to have Betty and I'm going to have Winifred pray with us. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, yeah. come into my life. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me. I believe that you rose again. I believe you took upon my sin. And Father, I need you in my life. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right now, Lord, make me a child of God and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Right now, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I owe a price I could never pay. You paid a price you never owed for me because you love me. I'm yours, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. And if you prayed this with all your heart and you believed it, Jesus has saved you right now. I'm going to pray for these prayer requests right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every prayer request, every person here. Father, we come against every sickness by the blood of the Lamb. We pray for every situation, every condition, every financial issue, whatever's going on in homes, whatever's going on with that individual. Father, we ask and we pray that you would visit them. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, answer every prayer request here. Answer each and every one in the name of Jesus. And people, I want you to be believed by faith that God is going to visit you, that God is going to answer you. And for those of you, I'm Pastor Manuel Johnson. This is only the truth. Send in all your love gifts. You know, that when God touches you, you know, I want to plant a seed in the ministry to help us continue to get the gospel out. And for each and every one of you that's sending your, 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 your seed, we're going to send you this, this um, healing scripture DVD. You're going to love it. It's one hour of healing scriptures. I want to get this into your homes. So as you, uh, you, can, you, you can call our prayer line and you, and, or you can go on the line and ask for the healing CD. It helps us, your seed helps us get around, get around, go around the world and, and to spread the news of Christ. The world needs Jesus, point blank. It needs Jesus. Anyway, I thank you so much. Megapraiseministries.com, megapraiseministries.com. We're going to see you next time here on Only the Truth. God loves you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.